Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is V. Welcome to the channel. I see a lot of new subscribers, so welcome. Um, usually I'm used in the capacity, but multiple capacities, obviously. Um, in the capacity of a double entendre, so meaning within the meaning, sort of like revelation upon revelation. But I'm also used as a piece of the puzzle. So there'll be a piece of the puzzle here that you have, a piece of the puzzle here, and you've been praying, you've been asking for something. And usually God uses me to connect the dots together, and it'll make more sense once you've seen something, heard something, something on any of the videos. So. Um, that's typically how I'm used, but also other things too. So, so welcome if you're new. And to my old G's, oh geez, oh geez, oh geez, welcome back, babe. Give me a hug. So, so let's get into this. I'm actually late. <clears throat> Try to. Re I don't normally even take this amount of time to record a video. So I've tried to record this video several times and already got a text, distracted, everything. You'll understand why when I get into the video. It's supposed to be out at nine o'clock. It's now eleven at my time. So I am late on the video. <clears throat> and forgive me for the raspy voice it is so cold in here I need a jacket now in this area so it is just I'm I'm, I'm freezing basically that's all I need <laughs> I'm freezing so let's get into this so right now the name is um, Lori Landowners I haven't showered I haven't done anything I'm roughnecking it today and any mentee that's called me early in the morning this is the voice they get and they know and I've had coffee this is the pre-coffee voice it's a little bit even worse but <laughs> it is what it is we gonna go so <clears throat> this one so far is called Glory Land Owners. So this is based on the scriptures in 1 Kings 21, 1 through 16. And because <clears throat> it's so cold, guys, I'm sorry, I'm cough. I need a blanket probably to be sitting here. Um, so I'm going to start reading the scripture and then I'm going to break it down and it's going to be detailed. What it's going to explain to you, because the Holy Spirit was highlighting it to me, is, let me see if I can get this lights a little bit better. There we go. The way the Holy Spirit was um, highlighting it to me was we're not getting that this is a part of the process and if you he thank you Holy Spirit he I saw an angel, he warned us in the Bible of the process before the promise come through you rhyming today dad the process before the promise so the process before the promise is not beautiful is what he's saying it's give it on my it is messy muddy <laughs> It's, it's messy so and and uncomfortable all those things so the process before the promise um, is is literally not what you would think it would be you know he said you know daughter tell them about the giants in the land and stuff like that so you know in the scriptures it's talking about the giants in the land and when they looked at them they said hey we can't take them you know and literally they were scared so this is because it's bigger than you thank you Holy Spirit come through so because it's bigger than you um, it's going to require more than you to overtake what is there. I'm also going to say, um, thank you Holy Spirit come through. You probably want to watch the other video that I just posted about the pigs because this is going to make sense because we operate not as well as God's children. We operate not in the natural sense. We're just natural bodies here living a physical experience. So, um, you know, it says in the scriptures, thank you, Holy Spirit. We fight not against um, our, you know, against flesh and blood but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? So these are spiritual battles that we're fighting, okay? This is not a physical battle. It is a physical battle too sometimes, but it's um, these are actual spiritual battles that we're fighting. So because of that, we're fighting spirit against spirit, okay? So in the previous video, we were talking about overlapping territories, which is um, previous video is legions. Um, it's talking about, you know, um, what do we have in common, okay? and Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's changed all this up. So the flesh has nothing in common with the spirit. Let's make that very clear. The spirit has common with it the spirit. But when one altar meets another altar, um, it's over, you know, comes together, it's going to crash or clash. One, the, as Tiffany, as I said in the previous video, as Tiffany McCormick mentioned, the stronger altar is going to win. So we're coming against boundary against boundary right now. Okay. And that's where the issue is. And some of these territories have been held and held on to for centuries, you know, longer, and they're not going to easily let go of the bloodline of the territory of the land, which is what I'm going to specifically get into. And there's a reason for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's even talking to me and revealing more um, why that is. Um, okay. Uh, he said to say what he just told me. So 
when spirits come on land, okay, and they come into territories, they then have rights to occupy and do certain things. And if they're trying to get into that territory um, and they have not been successful because they're spraying people or whatever it is, um, it makes it harder for them to get in and embody the evil that they want to plant there. Come on, through Holy Spirit. None of this was in my notes, y'all. So when they can occupy the land and they can occupy um, bodies or anything, they want to occupy anything, specifically bodies, but land is also something that can be occupied as well. And they take territories too that way, just like they take territories with individuals. Okay. So the individuals on the land, whatever they are occupying as well by nature is literally also possessed. I know that sounds strange, but it's true because, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. He's even giving me vision and revelation. Understand the skin is an organ. So anything that happens to the body is going to reflect on the skin. The land is the same way. Okay. So I'm going to say it that way. That's the way the Holy Spirit just kind of revealed it to me. But let's get into the actual text that he has because it's going to be a long video. So this is based on 1 Kings 21, 1 through 16. I've already been tagged for it. I already knew it was coming. It's just what it is. It's just par for a horse. So um, this is talking about Naboth's vine vineyard. So um, let's go. I'm going to read the scripture and I put it in last, unfortunately. So let me scroll down to the scripture and then I'll have to scroll back up here, guys. So, okay. So it starts off this Naboth's vineyard. So it says sometime later, there was an incident. Now, immediately the Holy Spirit said, stop daughter. And I'm like, what Holy Spirit? He said incident. And I thought it was unusual language for the Bible because the Bible is not usually saying incidents. There's my nose itching guys. There's Holy Spirit. So, and I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to highlight here? You know, what are you trying to say? Right. And he said, stop incident. And I'm like, okay. So this is what he literally brought to me after that. And it was like a full stop in the spirit. He's like, I need you to break that down a little bit further. Here we go again. No, we're not going to play another video. Um, he said, I need you to break that down a little bit. No, we're not playing another video. Oh, it keeps going through different stuff. Okay. So an incident in the international standard is defined as a situation that could, that might or could lead to a disruptive loss or emergency crisis. I heard that, I heard that Holy Spirit. He said, for those who are on the wrong side, this wrath and judgment is an emergency crisis for them. Okay. So interesting, if you read the text correctly, it sounds like a legal pleading. Okay, a legal pleading is a document that they submit into court. Um, basically, when there is a plaintiff and defendant against each other. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's what the court, what the attorney submits to the court. And it's an incident involving the plaintiff and defendant, which is an interesting choice for the words for the Bible. Okay? Because it says an incident. And usually that's in terms of a crime or terms of legal matters or things like that. It then names both parties involved in the beginning, which God, God was breaking this thing down succinctly. Okay, so let's continue. It goes and says the parties named are both Naboth the Jezreelite, and it gives what would be considered a plot map next. So it goes, it says, that here's the incident, here's the plaintiff and defendant, and here's where the incident happened, which is like a legal pleading or a legal matter, okay? And I need you to pay attention to this because this is very important. So it is a legal matter, okay? So where is the incident? Where is this incident? It's located in the vineyard. Now, if you know anything about real estate, real estate, they have plat maps. And I need to break this down except for people that don't understand. Plat maps are literally... Um, when you purchase a land, it will say, he even put me in a profession to know this. Isn't that crazy, guys? To know this years ago. So a plat map will say, when you purchase land or you purchase um, real estate, it'll say a fourth of an acre, half of an acre, an acre, however big the land is. It'll say it goes from the corner of, um, it'll usually define it in numbers or it'll define it in um, where it's located at. You know, located on Smith's Road and and Johnny um, Appleseed Lane, um, right 
northeast corner or something like that okay so as we read more into this text it goes in and it locates where this is okay that's key so it gives oh, thank you Holy Spirit. it gives geographical locations of where this incident occurred so it, it obviously the Bible is trying to highlight that for a reason and it does and there's a very specific reason it does that I'm also going to um, suggest that you read um, sorry that you watch the video which is talking about um, oh gosh the blood of Cain and Abel I'll link it down here because that's key because the remember in that particular video the blood of Abel testified against the blood of uh, Cain because Cain murdered Abel and this is also linked to that as well okay so the blood is can actually testify against you and it did in this case and nobody put that together so but let's go back to the plat map so the plat map actually identifies where an incident occurred so it says in the scripture it goes, where is the vineyard located? It's located in Jezreel, close to the palace of the A of Ahab the king. So apparently this was an identifying mark, and there were no there were not plentiful vineyards near the king's palace. Okay, so this was a sought-after vineyard, apparently because, or obviously because there's not any other vineyards near there. And the reason why that is, and he's saying to break break it down, because he actually, you know took me into his career to know this is because it, when you're identifying something on a plat map you have to know if it is a unusual identifying mark okay so it, you know an unusual identifying mark would be like a, a Walmart in the area a target in the area something that's not you're not you know there's like one there's not 17 in the area normally there's not they're within a certain region thank you Holy Spirit just like demonic entities come on through Holy Spirit this is you come on through daddy just like demonic entities okay so it was an identifying mark because this was the vineyard near the king's palace so if there had been several vineyards or more they would have identified that in the scripture especially in a legal pleading or anything they would have been identified that they didn't they said this was the one okay so get that you need to get that so it was sought after the only one near the king's palace which is king ahab okay um, and they need to identify. They needed to be identified correctly um, for it to be signaled, um, uh, signaled out, or you know, um, signaled out. You know. So now you need to pay attention how Jez moves. So I'm going to read the scriptures as we go forward. So you'll this all makes sense in reverse. I know a little bit. So if you can follow along in First Kings 21, it'd be easier. So. Let me go back to the scripture. I just want to. So, the beginning of the scripture says this. <clears throat> so, I'm going to read it. Maybe I need to read it, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, Nabus Vineyard. And then we'll go back to how Jess moves. Nabus Vineyard. So, it begins at 21. Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Nabus the Jezreelite. The vineyard was, was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, which is, Naboth was um, a righteous man, I guess you can say. Ahab was an evil king, okay? And his vineyard was next to Ahab's palace. It was one of the only vineyards that was, the, probably the only vineyard that was close to the palace, okay? Let me have your vineyard for use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, uh, or if you prefer, I will pay you what it's worth. Okay, so that's what he said, all right? Now, we're going to go back, I don't know if I wrote down all the scriptures, and I need you to read the whole thing and pay it, attention to how Jez moves, okay, in the scriptures. I may not be able to read it, guys. Okay, I need you to pay attention to how Jez moves. She moves carefully, okay, because it was strategic. These moves are moves you have to, you, you have seen before. By never identified as Jez, okay? And Jez is short for, I'm not, I don't even like saying the name, um, Jezebel, a binding in the name of Jesus. Moving behind the scenes in multiple arenas. God's want, God wants to highlight it to you clearly, okay? <clears throat> I need you to break down the scriptures succinctly and follow along with me on this, you know, on this. So, the first part of this is the proposition stage in stage one in 1 Kings 21. So, Ahab goes to Naboth and he makes a proposition. He says, look, I want your vineyard as close to my palace 
he said, I'll give you money for it, or I'll give you whatever you want for it. So this is obviously he's a wealthy man. He's a king, of course, right? So he came in the form of a friendly offer to pay for land. So understand, in, in the first stage, <clears throat> um, God said before she rears her ugly head, she comes in the form of a friendly offer to pay for something, right? And she actually offers a fair price or a better price, okay? So please note, it was not Jez that made the offer. It was Ahab. Jez is the wife of Ahab. If anyone doesn't know, you need to read the scripture. She's the wife of Ahab, and she's an evil wicked queen okay to ahab a king that's kind of being used as a puppet master to what she thank you holy spirit to her agenda okay thank you holy spirit so number two ahab said to naboth let me have your vineyard to use for my vegetable garden since it's close to my palace in exchange i will give you a better vineyard or if you prefer i will pay you what it's worth and oh, i heard that holy spirit golly dad so as i'm reading this and he says or if you prefer i will pay you whatever it's worth and i heard hissing of snakes i literally heard holy spirit hissing of snakes so he was trying to make the um offer my husband, the offer sound pleasing to him and conducive is what the holy spirit is saying give it my to get what he desired he said, well, you know, whatever you prefer, you know, and you've heard these things before from people. And I need you. Oh, I heard that Holy Spirit. I saw that too. Tag on that. So what he just showed me is this. He said, you've heard these things. You've seen these things before. You never put it together. And what he just showed me, oh, golly, come through Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but like on maps when you're traveling on the road and all of a sudden it kind of looks like a balloon. It's a pin. He said it's a pin. It looks like a balloon. A circle head that then you whisper into pen and it'll drop on the map and they'll say that's where uh arby's is that's where um mcdonald's is that's where this is right and it'll drop on the map okay so he just showed me i want you to pay attention to where you've seen these things and these movements and these people moving in the ways that my daughter is telling you and, and then it's me that i'm telling you so he said, I want you to that I'm not gonna, I want you to put a pin there. I want you to go back and bookmark those places because they're very key right now and strategic because he's gonna bring it up later to you. Okay? Because these moves are moves of this these spirits. Thank you, Holy Spirit, is, is what he's saying. Okay. But Naboth did not take the bait. That's the key. His snake got ah, I got it, Lord. So the snake was the presentation and the hissing and making it look advantageous. Kevin, I'm going to have that to <clears throat> Naboth in any way that would be suitable to him and pleasing to his, his flesh and anything. Thank you, Holy Spirit, come through. But the bait was not taken. Because the bait was not taken, this angered Ahab. We'll get into it further. Okay. So this was his response to Ahab. Naboth's response to Ahab was, but Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. Now, please pay attention to that. That's key. That is so key. And I did not get it until yesterday when Dad was really breaking this down. <clears throat> Naboth never replied, I can't give it to you. That's not. That was not his reply. It says, thank you, Holy Spirit, come through. It says, no, no man after the flesh. No, no man after the flesh. And Naboth was pretty much putting him up on game. I've discerned you, and I don't know you after the flesh. I know you after the spirit. And he said, the Lord has forbid it. I'm not forbidding it. The Lord has forbid it. And you're not going to come at me from flesh. Come through, Holy Spirit. Come through, Daddy. And he said, I'm not going to. He said, the Lord forbid it. He said, the reason why is I cannot give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He said to break this down further, daughter, so that they understand. So he was explaining to him how and why. And, and I'm hearing Holy Spirit say, you need to ask him how much to say in this season, especially in reference to what I'm talking about, landowners. Okay? You need to specifically ask him what to say and what not to say. This is so crucial. It is a life or death situation. On what you actually divulge is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Okay. So he said, this is the land of my ancestors. So if you know anything about tradition, Jewish tradition, or anything like that, and biblical order in reference to this, 
it was customary for them to build altars and to um, dedicate land and things to God. So this is dedicated land to God from his ancestors. So this is multiple generations of dedicated land. It was strategic that Naboth wanted his land. Because you got to remember, the people are just the puppets. The spirits are the ones moving behind the people to ascertain spiritually what's really there. Come through, Holy Spirit. None of this is in my notes, guys. So the spirit and Naboth ascertained that that was blessed land of multiple generations, and they wanted the blessing. That which was cursed wanted that which was blessed. He said to explain why, daughter. Okay, so I, I don't have the scripture, but I have to put it down here. So the reason a part of this is taking place is this, too. <clears throat> they can't get the blessings that God has for his kids. It says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it. We're going to get into that later in this video. It's probably going to be a 50 or 60 minute video. So when they take blessings, there's sorrow that comes with it. Because they were illegally taken or stolen. They're not the Lord's blessings. The Lord did not give it to them. They did not maintain the relationship. They did not, you know, do whatever was required by God to get the blessings. They illegally stole the blessings like Naboth did. So there comes a penalty for that at the end because it was taken illegally. Okay, we'll get into that. So they can get blessings because the enemy does reward his kids, but the blessings really not come with a penalty. So they envy the blessings of God's kids because they come with a free conscience. They come with um, no sorrow. They come with multi-generational blessings. So much comes with, you know, obeying God and, and obedience and doing what he asks you to do and serving God. They can't get those type of blessings. They can get the fleshly blessings. I, that's the only way I can put it and I, that will make sense. I hope that makes sense. So they desire, because these are spirits operating, they desire the spiritual blessings because the fleshly blessings don't add up to the spiritual blessings. And I heard that, Lord, and I saw that. Oh, my gosh, did I come through? I actually heard a conversation of demons right now, and they were comparing the blessings on the other side and looking at them. And they were angry because they weren't the same blessings. And they can see it better from that side. Come through, Holy Spirit. So let's examine this. Naboth replied that this is a spiritual inheritance from my ancestors. No, you can't have it. Okay. Is the, is the, so this is what the Lord was highlighting, is that this land was given to him by God and spiritually to his ancestors, and he discerned correctly. Naboth discerned correctly. Okay. So let's back up. The simple offer was not a simple offer. It was an attempt to take them in the natural what was spiritually inherited, not only for Naboth, but for his previous ancestors. It was a, it was an attempt to rob his bloodline. Come through, Holy Spirit. I just, just do it. You're adding. He's adding, y'all. He is. This, this is, he adding more than what the original text was. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come through. It was an attempt to take and steal his original bloodline. And he did. So look at that. Just pay attention to take and rob his original bloodline. He was gonna have he he wanted to have it no matter what. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. So the offer was never natural, it was always spiritual. The land Goshen, it was just an outward sign of spiritual inheritance. Get that very clearly. The land was just an outward sign of spiritual inheritance. Okay, and bloodline inheritance. So this was multi layered spiritual blessings inherited on his bloodline. That is the blessings of the Lord. Okay. Now pay closer attention to the text. Nabal's reply. He apparently prayed about it and said, the Lord forbid. No, not I, but the Lord forbid it. Let's continue. Please pay close attention to the spiritual patterns being formed. So in four in verse four, it says, um, in, <clears throat> from uh, 21 we're now down to verse 4 so it says Ahab went home sullen and angry 
because Naboth the Jezreelite had said he will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife, the evil king Jez, came in and asked him, why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? Right? Simple questions. So let's break this down because Jez is a spirit and can inhabit both men and women need to make this connection here now too so it's it's a, a spirit can inhabit it doesn't care what body it doesn't even care a lot of them don't even care if they inhabit animals they don't care they just want um outward expression through a um physical body no matter what it is that's why hence oh come through dad that he's tying into the freezes hence why the pigs they just want an outward expression through a body okay so it doesn't matter male female animal they don't care they really they're not picky okay they prefer a human body because they can do more with that but they do not care they want to just be expressed through a body okay so I need to make that clear so the any spirit really typically Ahab or Jez um, literally can inhabit male or female it does not matter okay so it can be both male or women and I need to make this uh, connection because the scripture states when a man and woman get married, they become one flesh. One flesh. You are out. You thank you, Holy Spirit. You are now in covenant with that spirit. One flesh. Okay. Now let's go back to my um, last three videos: eaters of flesh, drinkers of blood, and build on this too. And if one partner eats flesh and drinks blood. But the other doesn't when they consummate the marriage repeatedly they are now one flesh they were, they were one flesh when they got married but continual oh my gosh dad what okay let's get into this he just he's dropping bombs on me guys now i see why this was important I had to get out Whew. so if one drinks blood and the other doesn't so let's just say for um hypothetical sense one partner in the marriage is vegan but the other is a carnivore right so they repeatedly consummate the marriage you know um repeatedly they are now one flesh they're in agreement they were in agreement when they came in covenant but when they consummate the marriage each time they are renewing the covenant he just dropped that on me i didn't get that it, none of this is in my notes this is a note list. This is all Holy Spirit. Come through, Daddy. Have your way. So, <clears throat> he said one flesh means in agreement with. Okay? So, keep all of these things in mind as I'm building on this. So, they're renewing the covenant when they come together. So, she is in one flesh with him. So, he's in one flesh with a wicked, evil queen. But he's, a, he's, a evil, he's an evil king, too. Okay? But one having more power or or another having more power when they come together it's more powerful does that make sense um which also goes back to spiritual battle lines it goes it goes it works on both sides the holy spirit saying on the light side and the dark side okay so just to keep going let's go back and touch on that last video the legions of demons the key to that god was highlighting was the overlapping territories okay so the overlapping territories which is also neighbor's vineyard overlapping or touching the territory of King Ahab's um, castle or land. Okay, this again is what what, what we're dealing with, um, which is Nabal's altar ground was next to King Ahab's altar ground. They were um, next to each other, so say overlapping territories. Now, if you remember in the last video, legions, it said um, in the text that two men from the tombs made it so nobody could pass through the land land barriers. Okay. Flat maps are land barriers that literally define one, I just saw angel feathers, one area of land that's next to another area of land, okay, or where the land is geographically, okay? If you remember, I said ge uh, demonic geographical land boundaries. So in the, they were in um, the gatherings, and because they were in the gatherings, the demonic geographical land boundaries, this was a spiritual demon occupying the body of a person creating a geographical land boundary so that others could not pass through because remember in the scripture it said these men were so demon possessed that no one could pass through that land come through holy spirit but it all started in the spiritual realm okay 
Now let's go back to Nabal's reply. The Lord forbid it, right? The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my ancestors. Really, it's the bloodline of his ancestors and the blessings of his ancestors that he was asking for, okay? That's key. God is saying you're going to have to protect this land that he's giving to you, okay? You're going to have to protect it with trust. You're going to have to protect this land, okay, so that it cannot be transferred, all right? Um, if he gives me permission and all that kind of stuff, I feel like oh, I'm getting high chills. He's giving me per permission to maybe post some stuff or actually go ahead and um, lead on how to do some of that stuff. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, he said to say this too. I wasn't, none of this I'm planning. Um, he took me through real estate school so that I can actually help you guys in order to do that. Okay. Um, in some areas and lead you in that direction. In some areas come through Holy Spirit to God be all the glory. Um, I did not get my license, but he actually took me through on how to do that. There are ways to do that so that the land cannot be transferred to other people. Okay. So let's keep going. And had, thank you, Holy Spirit, let's talk more, had Nabo structured it correctly, and I don't know if this existed back there, back then, then the land would not be able to be transferred to anybody else. And there are ways to do that through certain things in the real estate industry where the land cannot be transferred to anyone but who is a blood relative and things of that nature. He says, children of God, you're going to have to do that because it is going to be just like Nabo's vineyard. Your land is going to be sought after for these same exact reasons, and it's going to be desired for these same exact reasons and these men are going to want to take you out for these same exact reasons because it is a multi-generational multi-inherited multi bloodline blessing he's releasing and has released to some people already okay so um and it's in the process of doing okay so so um let me just go back and see what else here we go again no we're not gonna play another video all right Let's see. Oh, okay, so let me go. I have to go and see where else I left off on here. Sorry, guys, because all this was not in my notes. Continue. Okay, so stage one was come in the friendly uh, offer form, okay, to pay for the land. And um, he refused, okay, and he replied that this was a spiritual inheritance, and he said, I can't give it to you, okay. So he went, so he went home angry and he, and he was talking to his wife. And when he did, she said, we can literally, okay. So we didn't get that far. So he was talking to his wife and he's sullen at this point. Okay. Oh, it's a lot guys. So let me break it down. So I'm going to start, I'm actually going to stop there and then I'm going to pick up in video two because we're already at three, 33 minutes. Okay. So it's going to be Nabos Vineyard one and Nabos Vineyard two. So I'm going to go ahead and actually um, pick up the second one. So this is not too long and it's, it's bite sized as you can watch it. So we're going to stop there. So I'm going to go through the genealogy of how all this is broken down to as well on the second video. So I'll see you in the second video. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.